Hello, hello, hello. God bless you all. Welcome to the house of his glory. I am Pastor Deidre Campbell Jones, and this is Mother's Day, May 12, 2024. Welcome to everyone. Thank you for uh, joining me today for worshiping with me today if you are worshiping with us live at the house of his glory com forward slash live please say hello say good morning i am so happy to share this morning with you chatting back and forth and um and just you know engaging with the message that god has for us uh, together. Amen. And if you are watching on demand any other time or any other day, welcome as well. You are most absolutely welcome as well. If you are watching from the main website, thehouseofhisglory.com forward slash messages. If you're watching from our church app, which can be found at iChurch for Life. Or if you are watching from YouTube, please, um, please worship with us. I, I hope that you will uh, not just tune in or tune out or ignore uh, what's going on in the background, but that you will truly uh, settle in with us, focus on uh, every word that goes forth, whether it's in prayer or song or the message. And, um, and truly, uh, I pray that you will be blessed and that you will receive uh, what God has for us today um, along with the rest of us worshiping live. Amen. And if this is your very first time, I would love it if you would let me know. Let me welcome you uh, to this morning's message. I'll send you um, an email with a Starbucks uh, gift card. Uh, just thanking you for sharing this time with us. If you will, text the word hello to 818-873-3370. And of course, if there is anyone who would like confidential prayer, um, my prayer team and I would love to pray for you. Uh, send in those prayer requests um, by texting the word prayer to 818-873-3370. Amen. 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 All right. After this little um, brief introduction, I will be back with prayer. We'll pray together. I'll be right back. Now it's air in our chest, that's why we're singing it back to you. For every battle you've won, for everything that you've done, and everything that you're gonna do. See too much, you ever doubt it. Feel so good, I wanna shout it. Yeah, when I really think about it, all I wanna do, all I wanna do is.
Amen, everybody. I am back. I am back. Ready to uh, get the worship portion of our service started through prayer. Please join me. Father in heaven, thank you for this day and this time together. We thank you for being our God and we thank you for your grace that saves us, that uh, keeps us, that protects us, that allows us the time to get to know you and to know your word and to know your truth in our lives. Father, uh, we just we just commit this time, we dedicate this time, we consecrate this time, meaning we set it aside and we designate this time as holy unto you and we just, um, as we worship you, as we praise you, as we learn of you, Father, fill us with your truth. Fill us with an understanding of your word. Touch us with your presence. Let us know that you are in the midst of this message, that you are in the midst of wherever we are, no matter when or from where we happen to be, Father, but connect us together by your spirit that we would indeed know that we are fulfilling your word uh, that tells us not to forsake the fellowshipping of one another together, that we are gathered together by your name and by your spirit, by uh, a willingness and a desire to know your truth, to uh, to be comforted by your spirit, to, um, to be strengthened by your son, Jesus Christ, to receive answers uh, through this word. Father, I know you can do it. We have so many needs out there, Father, whether it's clarity, uh, whether it's direction, of purpose, whether it's healing in our bodies, whether it's comfort for grief, whether it's just um, just to know that you have a place for us, that you love us, that you're with us. Father, I know that whatever it is, you can provide it through this word, that you can provide it through your presence. Father, and we thank you for it. I thank you for doing it. I thank you for bringing everyone who is watching, worshiping, and listening to this word, to this time and space, and I just ask you to bless them. Bless us all, Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would keep us in your care, that you would strengthen us, that you would teach us, that you would open our eyes, that you would show us uh, all that you would have us to know through this word today. And if there's anyone who doesn't know Jesus as their own Lord and Savior. Father, use this time, use a word, use a song, use something to draw them to the truth that you love them, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for them, and that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day so that they could have new life. And that by confessing out loud that they believe that, by confessing out loud that uh, they believe that Jesus is Lord uh, and they confess him as their savior, that you will forgive them of their sins, cleanse them of all unrighteousness and make them righteous in you, drawing them and connecting to you forever with everlasting life. That is my prayer for everyone who doesn't know you. Uh, uh, and know Jesus as their Savior. We pray that prayer for our friends and our loved ones right now, Father, that you would touch them, that you would send us with a word for them, that you would send someone who they would listen to. We lift up right now the names of those on our hearts that we desire to see saved. In Jesus' name, we thank you for doing it or helping us to do it. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we pray this prayer in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, everybody. And if indeed uh, you felt that tug of salvation through that prayer, you want to make that confession known, I would be happy to send you an ebook that says, You're Saved, What's Next? That's what it's called. You're saved. What's next? Um, that I wrote, and um, 
And so if you will text the word SAVED to 818-873, I will send that along to you along with uh, a gift welcoming you welcoming you into the family of God. But if you still have questions, if you're still not sure, and you'd like to know more in a safe and uh, unpressured environment, you can go to the website, JesusDoesn'tJudge.com. JesusDoesn'tJudge.com. No matter what anyone may have said or what you may have heard, Jesus doesn't judge you for your life, for your sins. He just wants to show you that he loves you amen amen after this song of praise we'll come back with the word god has for us today Under the surface, he never makes me feel ashamed. When I'm hurting, he handles every question in my searching. Even when I wonder if he's working, he takes all of the fear away. So when you think that you're stuck in the place you're standing. He sees everything that you're gonna be He's healing every lie you believed He sees you, He sees you, oh And He knows your future so He's pulling you close He is your defender, I know He sees you, He sees you Different voices have tried to label you just by your choices. But I am here to tell you that you're chosen. His love's calling out your name. So when you think that you're stuck in the place you're standing, he sees everything that you're gonna be. Welcome back, and once again, happy Mother's Day 
to all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day to my mom. I love you so much. We love you so much. And I want to also uh, say to anyone who is missing their mom on this day, and it's especially uh, tender or painful for you today, I just want to say, may God bless you. May he wrap his loving arms around you and may the Holy Spirit love on you and comfort you. Fill that void in you today as only he can. I know it's not the same, but there is something special about the kind of comfort that Holy Spirit can give you when you're grieving, uh, when you're uh, sad um, in ways that people just cannot do and so that is my prayer for you and my blessing for all moms that you would be strengthened and encouraged and comforted and loved up on today um, and so we're talking about basic life beliefs this month and nothing is more basic I really truly do believe that nothing is more basic of a need or concern than moms and dads have for their families. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Focus on the family and because it is Mother's Day, we're going to look at it from the perspective of moms, um, even though moms and dads um, that parents have so many concerns and um, there's so much involved for parents in general uh, when it comes to their families um, but we're going to stick to that perspective of moms today um, and I want to speak directly to you and I want to start with or start from Acts chapter 16 verse 31 and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved and your house. Now, we have a phrase that says, As for me and my house, we shall be saved, right? And so you might be thinking, What an odd place for me to start on a Mother's Day message that's supposed to be from the perspective of moms and their families. Um, but I want to ask this question, moms, do you believe in Jesus? Now this is different from the question I've been asking um, last week, last month, and this whole year so far where I've been asking you all do you believe God? Do you believe God at his word, right? I am today specifically asking if you believe in Jesus because simply by believing in Jesus, by confessing him as your savior, by making him Lord of your life, you have this promise that Therefore, you and your whole household shall be saved. And so, while we as moms um, may worry about a lot of things when it comes to our kids, um, we, we know that we want them to live, and we want them to live better lives than, uh, than we have. We want them to uh, live in the blessings of life. We want them to not suffer the same mistakes that we made. Although, you know, even though we know, like everybody has to make their own mistakes, right? Um, and so when it comes to salvation, then it's like we know that that is the uh, the baseline, that that's the firmest foundation that they can have, that's the best starting point, uh, you know, and it's like, it's like no matter what else 
you know, you can know, well, my kid knows the Lord, right? We want them to be the best that they can. And truth be told, um, in case you don't know it <laughs> for yourself as somebody's child, that being the best you can really is only possible when you know the Lord as your Savior. And the thing is, God wants that for us as His children. He wants that for our children. He wanted that for us as someone else's child. That no matter how they were raising us, whether in the care and admonition of the Lord or whether or not, you know, that God still wanted us to know Him and to know His promises for us as kids. He wants us to know His promises for our kids. And so there's many, there are so many. We're going to look at a few, including this one, um, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. I think of all the promises there are regarding our children. Um, this has got to be um, one that can easily be glossed over. Um, misunderstood. Um, it's easy to not recognize the depth of what God is promising here. He's saying that for whatever your child might go through, he's promising that they will be taught of him, that he will teach them, he will show them the way, he will guide them, he will lead them, and that he will see to it that they have great peace great peace and I'll say this for myself it's a verse that because we don't know it and if we happen to hear it we kind of go okay well great my kid but it's a verse that we need to pray over our kids it's a verse that um, we probably need to put into practice maybe a hundred percent more than we have. That if we pray that verse over our children, if those verses were prayed over us, can you imagine um, how much more, even for those of us doing well and who have uh, had the blessing and the pleasure of having, you know, wonderful, uh, God-loving parents, you know, um, I can just being a teenager, <laughs> wilding out in my own, you know, young adult years. Um, you don't want the world to teach your kids, right? You don't want their peers to teach your kids. You struggle and you try your daggone best to be the one to teach your kids. And then sometimes, especially in these days, we don't even really want our teachers, <laughs> some of the teachers, to teach our kids, right? And then some of the good teachers are struggling to teach our kids, right? And so to know that we can pray this prayer over our kids, over our families, that our children will be taught of the Lord and they can have great peace. Well, it's an example of the kind of promises that are scattered throughout Scripture for our kids and for our families. Um, there are so many, and they all address the types of things that the basic types of things that we're hoping in regards to our families, that we're praying for in regards to our families. And like I said, the problem is these kind of promises are scattered throughout 
scriptures in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And if we do find them in the Old Testament, we have a tendency to think, well, that was the Old Testament or that was the law. You know, what about my kid in today's day and age? Well, Galatians chapter 3 that says um, that Jesus went to the cross so that we could be redeemed uh, from all curses of the law and thereby receive all the blessings of Abraham make it possible for those of us who believe in Jesus to receive the blessings of the Old Testament as well as be redeemed from the curses of the Old Testament that the curses of the Old Testament become blessings in our lives and I I wanted to say that because the next verse I want to read is from the curses in uh, Deuteronomy and to have you know that because Jesus went to the cross and because you believe he is your savior that you are redeemed and your children are redeemed from this particular verse that I'm going to read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 32 thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thine hand. Again, let me remind you that we are redeemed from this simply because of Jesus' work on the cross. But the world is after our sons and daughters. The world is trying to kidnap our sons and daughters and this verse is not just talking about a physical separation that our kids will be taken from us although God help us all for those children who are taken from us in one way or another uh, so many tragedies befall our kids and and let me tell you this is one of the things that affects me deeply um, is how so easily our black and brown children are taken from us in police violence and in just senseless, senseless uh, violence among our own people that really wrecks my heart. But this verse, when it talks about um, our sons and daughters uh, being given unto another people, and that we look on them and our hearts fail for longing for them, this is not a, a, a necessarily a physical separation uh, from us. Because it says our, our eyes would look upon them and fail for longing for them. It means that the world wants to take our kids um, by their, their, their souls. The world is after the souls of our children. This means that by the redemption grace of Jesus Christ, we can have our own children redeemed from the hand of the enemy from the mindsets and the philosophies and the worldly understandings that seek to uh, deceive them kidnap them hold their righteousness in captivity uh, we see it we see it so much and we don't recognize it for what it is uh, we can see it in so many different things happening to our youth and and sometimes it seems right but scripture still says there are ways that seem right to a man but they are the ways that still lead unto death and that death means that 
it, it's opposite from and it's separate from life the everlasting life of God the life that God has for our children the Zoe life the uh, the thoughts and the plans and the good life that God has for our kids that the world is after their very souls their very lives and it happens through their minds through what they believe and what they think and who they align themselves with and the philosophies that they begin to live by and the truths they begin to receive as or or the things that they say well you know this is my authentic self the the, the things that they believe about themselves or uh, the the lies of society that are wrapped up in uh, in facts that make them seem like truths it's all to keep them from receiving hearing and believing the truth of God's Word and so we have a responsibility we have a battle every day trying to uh, uh, keep our kids uh, in the truth and to raise them in as I've said before the admonition of the Lord we're working hard we know we are working hard right well we have a promise for that as well Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go. In the way he should go. A lot of parents have that, have this phrase, I didn't raise you to be this way, right? Because we've been trying to raise our children in the way they should go. And many of us, were raised in the way our parents thought we should go. Not necessarily me and my parents, <laughs> but a lot of people did have parents that raised them in the way the parents thought they should go. That verse says, train them up in the way they should go. Meaning, and when you look at the Hebrew, it's like, raise them in their bent you raise them in the way that God has made them you raise them to be who God has created them to be that it's kind of our our job as um, good stewards of our kids good stewards of our kids to recognize who God has created them to be and then do our best to raise them up, train them up, shape and mold and teach them according to who God has created them to be so that when they rebel against you, when they reject that, when they deny that, when the world is coming against them and convincing them that's not who they need to be, that's not who they are, that they don't want to be like that, and that the parents that are trying to make them do this and make them do that are wrong, that when they come through that <laughs> and they get tired of the world beating up on them and the Lord has worked on them enough and taught them and gotten through to them that then they will come back. They will not depart from the good things that you uh, trained in them, that you instilled in them, and that you did your very best to teach them when they were growing up and still listening to you. <laughs> Amen. That is the <laughs> that is what we have to hang on to, especially uh, when it gets rough. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Listen, and we know it's going to get rough. And we know that as far as moms are concerned when it comes to our families, there's so much more than 
just raising our children. I mean, there are families um, that women, that moms have that, you know, that that go beyond just raising our our kids, right? Even uh, even at times, you know, when we're talking about focus on the family, you know, there are women who may not be moms that have a focus and a burden on their families as well. And here's the thing, so many times, um, or not even so many times, just all the time, it's very easy uh, to get caught under the concerns and the burdens, um, the cares that we have for our families. And I know there are times, even for myself, that it feels like the weight is all on you. Like there have been times I'm like, my goodness, I don't know <laughs> if these boys would make it without me if something happened. <laughs> They'd figure out a way, <laughs> but it would be quite a bit of work for them to figure out a way. <laughs> but you know, there's so much that, that um, you know, besides just, you know, the care and the feeding, you know, the protection of their daily lives. It's like, are our family members, are our kids gonna be healthy, contributing, God-fearing, and capable citizens of this planet? Are they able to be responsible? Are they able to be fulfilled? Are they going to uh, be able to succeed and not just succeed like oh make a lot of money but to do well in life right to walk in this world uh you know maneuvering the deception and the ways in which the world is trying to break them down tear them down tear them apart and destroy them the way the enemy is seeking to do nothing but kill steal and destroy everything we put into them everything we want to provide for them every opportunity that god might have for them there is so much that we as moms think about, are concerned about, pray about, and hope for when it comes to our children. It involves so many things that many of the promises we have for our families go beyond whether or not you can find a scripture that has the word family in it or child or children. And so when it comes to life on a daily basis, when it comes to feeding, clothing, teaching, protecting, loving, nurturing, helping, advising, our families, comforting, praising, encouraging. Did I say encouraging already? <laughs> there are verses in scripture for each of those things. For each of the things that we want to pour into our families, God has a scripture to help us rely on Him for those things. We're talking all year long about only believing. We've been talking all last month about the levels of faith that we have for different things in our lives and how we need to have the same level of faith for everything in our lives. Well, when it comes to our families, we need to think the same way. Do we trust God that he's able to protect our kids? Do we trust God that he's able to, to teach um, our kids? Do we trust God more than what we worry about over our kids and our families? Do we trust God? And I know it's so hard, especially as I said, there are so many kids losing their lives 
losing their way, losing their identity, losing their purpose, losing out on themselves, losing out on truth, losing out on a relationship with their Heavenly Father. That I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But that is where our faith comes in. That is where our belief comes in. That if we partner with God, if we learn of God, if we trust in God, if we rely on God, and we pray these verses from the Word of God over our kids, we will find that there is help, there is instruction, and from that help and that instruction, we can help one another the way it says in Titus chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not giving to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And so whether you had a mom who taught you how to love your kids or not, whenever you love your kids, God is pleased. He is pleased. He sees you. He knows your heart for your family. He knows the burdens you bear for your family. He loves you because of the love you have for your, for your family. He's helping you because of the help you want to give to your family. He's there for you. He will never leave you or forsake you. And He wants for your family the same things you do, maybe even more so. And he's promised us help. He's promised us strength. He's promised us joy. He's promised us peace. He's promised us guidance and wisdom when it comes to our families. And so when we focus on the family, it means focusing on Jesus first as that intermediary, as that uh, example, uh, as that hope for our families. We have a hope in Christ Jesus. The hope of glory, yes, but the hope of salvation, the hope of protection, the hope of provision, the hope of guidance, the hope that He will empower and enable and bless our families to be all that He has, that God has purposed and designed each individual member of our families to, to be in Him. That as we pray, and I think this is the best thing that moms can do for our families, is pray. Pray, 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 pray that God will, will reach our family members, teach our family members, be with our family members, strengthen, encourage them, and reveal to them exactly who God has purposed them to be. Amen. Amen, amen. I hope you are blessed by that message. As I said, I was going to deliver it from the perspective of moms and kids, but I hope that you all, even kids out there, my own kid included, can see the heart of God for us all, regardless of our own parenting <laughs> and to see that the love of moms makes a difference God recognizes that he honors that and so as we honor our moms and dads our mothers and fathers he says that our days will be long upon this earth so 
We honor moms for all that they've done in our lives. We love you. We thank you. I bless you and I encourage you. No matter what, keep on, Mama. Take care of yourself so that you can keep on taking care of your families. Amen? Amen, amen. God bless you. I love you. Let's go now into this song of worship. I'll be back with partnership and closing prayer.
Amen, amen. I am back. I am back, and I pray that you are too. If so, this is the time I want to invite you to partner with this congregation. If you haven't done it already, I thank you for those of you who are responding to this call of partnership. God bless you. I, I'm telling you, now is the time to do it. We are ramping up. God is ramping us up to pour out into his church, into his sons and daughters, all that he has for us. Scripture says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has the heart imagined all that the Lord has prepared for us. We're getting ready to see some of those astounding things because if you look around, time is shorter and shorter and shorter by the day. Jesus is coming back soon and there's a lot that has to happen before then. A lot that is bad and not so good. But guess what? Jesus. Jesus is with us. Jesus has power and purpose and victory for his church, for his children. I want you to be a part of that. And that comes, you, you sign yourself up for that victory, for that overcoming power by aligning yourself with this congregation because God has got some woo, amazing promises for us as a congregation, right? We get individual promises through individual messages, but collective promises come through aligning yourself with a congregation and so if you would like to join this congregation and be a part of what God is promising this congregation you can do so by going to the website thehouseofhisglory.com click on the contact page and the link that says join the congregation or you can text the word join to 818-873-3370 both of those avenues will get you to the same form where you just fill out a little basic information and I will send you a thank you for joining this family, this congregation um, of the church of God's people because we are the church. And if, as I said, you would like to align yourself with this message, you can do that through your giving. So I invite you to give at this time. If you are watching us live, there's a link above the logo. There's three menu bars. Um, and if you're watching on demand from the website, there's giving links in the menu and in the footer. If you're watching from the app, there's three menu bars with a giving link there. If you're watching on any platform at all and you would rather give digitally, you can do so uh, through two avenues. First, by which you can uh, you can uh, go to Cash App, and uh, you you can give by way of dollar sign. Well, the cash tag dollar sign H O H G Church. My son says that maybe you don't even have to put in the dollar sign, um, but it is case sensitive, and you can also give to the church by way of the cell. If you give by any other means, a phone number or a personal address, an email address is going to come to me. <laughs> and I will thank you for your blessing. <laughs> but to give to the church, it is uh, by way of the email address contact at the house of his glory dot com. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Listen. God is so pleased when we give and when we give willingly. And it's the avenue he uses to pour back into our lives. Every giving scripture has a promise attached where he says one way or another, he's going to give it all back to you exponentially, bountifully, abundantly over and above that which we give. He's just that kind of God. Amen. I challenge you and he challenges you in his word to test him at it and see. Amen. So there you go.
however you give I am blessed that you give you are all such amazing givers and so I thank you for your giving as well let's go now into final closing prayer Thank you for joining me back. You know, just now I was thinking, preparing my heart for uh, what I wanted to pray for. And I actually found my thoughts uh, sort of drifting into what I wanted to pray for myself. And I thought, you know, this is really what I need to be praying for us all. So join me. I'm going to pray what they start out as a personal prayer and I hope that you recognize yourself in it as well scripture says whenever two are touching as in agreeing upon anything God will do it so if you hear something that you agree with align yourself with it and God's word says he will do it join me Father in heaven, we thank you for your word today. Father, I thank you for our moms, the love of our moms. We thank you even for those moms that did the best they could. Father, we thank you for uh, the moms that left us way too soon. Father, we thank you for the love you've poured out into our lives through our mothers we thank you father god that there is a love you want us to recognize from you that we receive because of our families help us see that truth and to weed out uh, whatever the world uh, attaches to that whatever is a, a deception that the world wants to convince us of no matter how it comes into our lives father let us see the pure truth of your will and your desire for us to see ourselves in uh, the light of who you created us to be to see ourselves through your eyes father fill us with a power that just amazes us father show us a way that we are not just complacent with what we have where we just don't give up on what we've done already but show us that there's so much more in us to give and to do father give us new words to speak new prayers to pray new insights to pursue father show us new ways in which we can be examples of you father show us where we can live Live like Jesus did. Show us the characteristics of ourselves that come directly from you. Father, reveal to us that we have power over all the powers of the enemy so that nothing should by any means hurt us so that we would no longer be hurt by the words of other people, by the lies of other people, by the deception and the wickedness and the destructions of the world, but that we would see joy in this world, that we would see excitement in this world, that we would see the trails of your favor and your blessing upon us in this world, leading us and guiding us to kingdom purpose and kingdom power and kingdom truth. Let us see the authority and the dominion and the power that we have in this world to make a difference in our communities, to make a difference in our children's lives, to make a difference in our families' lives. Father, give us the boldness to pray salvation on those that we know who do not know you, that they would come to a knowledge that they are loved and that you want them to uh, to give up uh, on uh, the enemy and the ways in which the enemy has deceived them, lied to them and influenced them. Father, in the name of Jesus, give us a heart of kindness that we would not condemn people, criticize people, and talk about people, talk about them behind their backs and click our teeth at them as if they should know better when we don't know better in the way that we're treating them, but help us to love 
Father, help us to love in ways that we don't know we can love. Father, strengthen us in ways that we don't know we can be strong. Father, remove from us the things that seem so common in this world that break us down, that tear us down, that the enemy uses to keep us separated from your truth, from your power, from your strength, and even from your love. Father, heal our bodies, but Give us the boldness to lay hands on the sick that they might be healed as well. Father, give us provision and prosperity. But Father, give us the boldness to speak miracles of prosperity and wealth and transfer of, uh, of uh, finances into our lives and other people's lives as well. And Father, give us the wisdom that we might speak words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophetic words of truth and deliverance, clarity and direction, prophecy into and over people's lives. Father, most of all, let us know your love that we might love one another. Father, I thank you. I bless your holy name. You are righteous. You are gracious you are merciful powerful lovely awesome amazing astounding and true father we love you we thank you we pray this prayer knowing that you will do it we pray this prayer in the mighty name of your son jesus christ amen amen y'all that is my heart for us all. I pray you've received it. I pray you have a very blessed, blessed week. Go in his power, walk in glory, and receive all the blessings of the kingdom of God that he has truthfully just for you. I love you so very much. Bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there.